Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing the second video in the series where I look at various desktop environments and assess their pros and cons and uh, how I found using them over the past few weeks or however long it's taken me to sort of get used to them. And today I'm going to be doing the second in the series and uh, this is particularly shortly after the first where I talked about Cinnamon, but um, I have been using both Cinnamon and KDE now for quite some time, so I certainly feel comfortable using either of them. Uh, I'm going to start moving on to my third in the series after I've completed this video, but today, KDE. Now, KDE has been around since 1996, according to Wikipedia, and uh, the goal of the community is to provide basic desktop functions and applications for daily needs as well as tools and documentations for developers to write standalone applications for the system. This has been around for a long, long, long time. In fact, it's pretty much the oldest uh, desktop environment I'm going to be talking about in this series. It predates GNOME by one year. Now I really like KDE and to be honest I am surprised that not more distributions in the top 10 of the distro watch charts don't actually base their distributions using the KDE uh, environment because well it as far as I'm concerned, covers a hell of a lot of bases. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Okay, so the first thing about KDE is that it is pretty darn user-friendly. Uh, I'm surprised more distributions in the top 10 ranking of DistroWatch don't use KDE as its default uh, user interface because it's pretty damn fantastic. I find it very user-friendly. Almost everything you can do can either be done drag and drop or at least somewhere through the GUI. And I'm not just talking about your basic um, control panel features as well. I'm talking about stuff that you would usually need to either install a separate application for or actually sometimes have to go ditch and go to the command line. But KDE covers just about, it covers more than any other desktop environment within, you know, what you can do within its GUI and uh, everything else. For those of you that are unaware, GUI is an initialism or an acronym that stands for Graphical User Interface. That's just um, in case that one slipped you guys by. Um, it also looks the best. Uh, this is again a highly subjective uh, way of looking at it, um, but to be honest, since I can remember KDE has always had the edge on the eye candy. I remember trying it out in SUS uh, years and years and years and years ago uh, when I was comparing it to Windows 95, Windows 98 and KDE looked significantly better than Windows back then and it's only as far as I'm as far as I can tell and as far as I'm concerned looks better than Windows consistently. Uh, I also like the fact that uh, whenever it does its, its upgrades it still keeps its aesthetic, it still keeps its style which is really quite important. It doesn't do anything like GNOME does and just switches everything around. Uh, it actually stays pretty pretty sensible. In fact even when it comes to switching out their traditional menu for a uh, for a more panel type menu that you see you know you get in in uh, distributions like uh, well Windows 7 uh, and Linux Mint and you know the panel has become the uh, de facto replacement for the standard start menu uh, that you see in things like Windows 95 Windows 98 you can still go back to that old style menu in KDE even this far along the line if you look at uh, Windows for example uh, they will often introduce new features in new versions of Windows and give you the option to revert back to what you could do in the previous version of Windows but a couple of releases down the line and you'll find that those uh, uh, options to revert back to how you used to use your system will fade away uh, as they force people onto using their system the way that they want to use them. Uh, KDE still has uh, a great deal of institutional memory and legacy and that's really uh, important and that's where I think KDE draws a lot of its real value that I think a lot of people often overlook. It's been around a hell of a long time. Hell of a long time. Longer than any other desktop environment. And in that time, it's actually had the ability to um, learn how to deal with institutional obstacles that it might have to face. It's grown a fantastically large user base over time, and that user base um, is, is now very, very, very stable as well. There are a lot of desktop environments, there are a lot of distributions that gain a lot of steam in a very short amount of time that don't sustain that energy. And this is where longevity of any kind of open source project is important, is that if it's got a long history, it's likely to continue to have a, a, you know, a long and distant future as well. And that means that you're not having to ditch that desktop environment for another one as soon as it falls out of style. KDE is not going to be falling out of style anytime soon, and I think that's particularly important. Uh, what else have I got down here? 
Lots of plugins. Again, this comes uh, with a large user base uh, and one that's been around for a long time is that to a lot of the people involved in the KDE community, putting together a plugin or putting together a theme or anything like that is no great shakes for them because they've been doing it for such a long time now. It doesn't require the same amount of resources as doing it for a newer um, desktop environment would involve. Um, and also, uh, a lot of things are backward compatible on KDE as well. Um, so you've got like a, a longer library as well. Not saying that that's not the case with other um, desktop environments, but it, it, I, I find that you often have fewer breakages when it comes to upgrading as well when you're using KDE plugins and all this kind of stuff as well. Uh, so I think that the fact that it's been around for a long time is a, it's a big bonus in and of itself because it gives you uh, a, an established track record and you know that its popularity is not just a fad, which is something that I feel that is often overlooked and people sometimes might find some value in looking out for from time to time when it comes to open source projects, when it comes to distributions, when it comes to desktop environments. Um, it also gives you the option to configure your GTK apps, which um, uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember GTK-based desktop environments being able to do with Qt. I could very well be wrong on that, or at least not as easy, but within the control panel of KDE, you can select a separate theme for your GTK apps, and even that separate theme might even be uh, the same as your Qt theme, meaning that your um, the visual difference between GTK apps and Qt apps is seamless. Um, and I, I, I mean, there's probably a way to do that on GTK um, based desktop environments, but it's just I found it to be significantly easier on Qt. But that's you know just me as well. I like the built-in apps as well. I like the fact that it has. It almost seems to be aware that it has a brand. That putting the K in everything or putting the K at the front of everything. So you've got Caden Live Conqueror with a K, uh, Kate console with a K, you know, all these applications, Amarok with a K at the end, you know, see what they did there? And, all, you know, that kind of brand, I think, uh, gives an impression of continuity within the software and within the desktop environment, and I like that. It's not just a desktop environment, it's a desktop environment with accompanying apps that you know fit into it really, really well. And it, and it, it's professional is really what it, what, what, it, what it strikes me as. It, it takes it a level above and beyond what we've seen with other desktop environments, is that it, it just has this degree of what feels like professionalism. It's, uh, and, and it makes me feel very comfortable using it, just knowing that um, that, it, that, that much time and thought and effort has been, has been put into it. Um, it's customizable as well. It's um, it, the reason I initially installed it was so that I could do um, that I could uh, have a lot of customizable features when it comes to the multi-monitor layout, and I've had no problems whatsoever dealing with uh, a multiple monitor layout where mon where both of the monitors are not the same size, and I need my primary display to be different from the display where my taskbars are on. It covered that, and it didn't even blink. It didn't flinch. It just it just did it. And that's fantastic. Um, I also like the fact that you can the um, you know the like uh, going back to the eye candy. The eye candy looks fantastic. You can turn it off and it still looks pretty good. I do that because I'm not actually a fan of the animated windows and stuff like that. I like the option there, and the option there makes it feel more professional and it makes it feel like it appeals to can appeal to more people. It just doesn't appeal to me, but I like that it's there and I like that you can switch it off. And I like the I like the snappiness personally, and I'm willing to have the snappiness. It, the sacrifice of, of, of looks and wavy windows and zooming in and out effects and all that kind of stuff. You can move the panels. You can make uh, KDE look pretty identical to the old GNOME 2 layout as well with very little effort. You can make it look incre and fe function very, very similar to Mac OS where you've got the dock uh, with um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, yeah, like I say, very customizable. All of this done within the graphical user interface as well. You know, you're not even installing additional pieces of software or anything like that, it's there right out of the box. Uh, and it's very expansive, it's got so many bells and whistles in. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much everything that I, I really want to cover with KDE. The only criticism I will give it, oh, there, there are, there's one criticism and one minor criticism. One big criticism is that it's, it does use a lot of system resources, mainly RAM. It takes a, You need a good solid 2 gig of RAM to get this thing running smoothly. It's probably the heaviest of the desktop environments overall, uh, and uh, it is incorporating a lot of stuff into that. And um, it, it, with the Qt libraries, I guess having Qt software run with that, it becomes less of an issue. It's, it, it you know it all works together like a, a well-oiled machine, significantly better. But it's not for a lightweight machine. It's not for an old machine. It's not for. A, it's not a lightweight distribution. I've seen uh, distributions uh, cut down KDE to quite a lot. So when they say that KDE needs two gig of RAM, there may be ways you can get around that. There may be sort of lightweight options. 
It also comes with a netbook um, interface as well, which kind of implies, although I've not investigated this route, that you might be able to scale it back so that it does work smoother on netbooks. Because I wouldn't trust cu current KDE on a net on on a, on a regular end netbook. I might trust it on a high end netbook, but not on a not on a, a sort of a regular netbook. I, I with KDE, it yeah, you know it. it 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 uses a lot of it uses more system resources than others, um, and if it, if it didn't have so many other redeeming factors, it would be a big problem for me. Um, but I've got plenty of RAM. I got the money to expand on when it comes to RAM. Uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a not a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a high end machine, but it's certainly doing very well for me at the moment. Um, and it can play games. You know, it can play off the shelf games without a problem on the higher settings now. Um, so. Um, yeah, that's about it with KDE. If your computer can handle it, uh, and most sort of reasonably new computers can, uh, it's 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 almost a personal recommendation as far as you'll get from me. Um, and it and it covers everything that I like. Um, it obviously is included in the repositories of just about any dist um, distribution going. Um, it's well known, has a huge user base that's been around for a heck of a long time. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it ticks all of the boxes apart from, of course, that lightweight one. But I will be talking about more lightweight distributions in future videos. I'm going to be now looking at my next uh, desktop environment, and I'm going to stick with the uh, the heavy hitters to begin with. So I'm probably going to be moving across to GNOME. This uh, I'm anticipating this with bated breath in a way because I am a big fan of the traditional desktop layout. GNOME have certainly questioned that and turned it on its head, and I'd like to see whether or not I can actually get used to it. I uh, have tried Unity before. I will try Unity again at some point in this video series to see if I can get used to it, which I'm really not uh, not expecting much out of that. Um, but GNOME, I always considered GNOME to be better at doing a job of having a... I want to call it a mobile inter uh, interface, but a lot of people at GNOME tell me that I shouldn't be referring to it as a mobile-based interface because there's nothing mobile about it apparently. But we'll find out when I discover that uh, when I discover uh, what it's like to use GNOME on a daily basis. Thanks very much for watching. Give your thoughts on KDE down in the description below, and um, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.